Hi, my name is Lori Kellogg, and I am the owner and the founder of Christabella Studio. And today, I want to show you my painting practice that I call an intuitive and expressive painting practice that has been incredibly meaningful to me. And we're going to get started on this painting practice for under $10. That's because we really need to be free to mess up if we need to. If I wanted to buy a brand new museum quality canvas and I wasn't sure about my painting abilities, then I might be afraid of messing up my canvas. But if instead I head to my local thrift store and I buy a $4.99 print um, and I actually mess it up, no problem. It's only $4.99. So we're going to turn a thrift store painting into this painting right here. This is the end. This is the masterpiece. And it's not even what I started out planning to do. And I'll talk you through that. So I hope you follow me along. This is going to be three videos. We're going to first we're going to we're going to talk about how to begin. We're going to talk about the middle stages. We're going to talk about how to wrap it up and finish your masterpiece. And I hope you will join me and get something really meaningful out of this video. So stick with me and here we go. First, let me tell you what you absolutely must have to begin this practice. First, you need a canvas. This canvas is a nice thick 24 by 24 canvas that I picked up at a thrift store. You can see it's nice and thick, about an inch thick here. It's got a very solid construction. The, the print, the canvas is very tight on it. And so um, this was simply, and you will see it, you will see at the beginning of the video, this was simply a, a canvas print that somebody purchased in like a regular home goods store. It's not a, there's no paint on here to start out with. It was just a canvas print. You really don't have to do anything to prepare the canvas to start uh, because it will adhere. Now, I wouldn't buy a oil painting from a thrift store because acrylic paint will not adhere to oil paint. But other than that, pretty much you can buy just a plain regular printed canvas that's got some kind of picture on it and you'll be good. So get a good size because actually bigger is easier to paint on than smaller. So you have to get so detailed. So give yourself a room. You don't actually have to have a table easel. It's okay if you do, but um, I have one just for demonstration purposes, but it's perfectly fine just to do it on your regular table. You're going to want a piece, some paper to go underneath your canvas. You can see mine's pretty messy. What I do with that paper in between, uh, in between colors, I just use my brush and I just take the extra paint off on that paper. The reason why I do that is two, two reasons. One, I do a method called the dirty brush method, meaning I don't get, I don't clean out my brush in between uh, different paint colors. I like the way the paint will mix on the, on the paint. So I just take off as much excess as I can and then I start with the next paint. Um, and two, it's environmentally friendly to do it that way because we don't want to put a lot of acrylic paint into the water system. And actually the third reason is because this paper then uh, becomes a uh, something I can use for my next art project because this is tissue paper. You can do any kind of paper though. It doesn't have to be tissue paper. But I will save this paper because it's going to have lots of colors on it now and I will be able to adhere it to another canvas like this 
and it will become a background of another painting. So first canvas. I bought this canvas, as you can see, for $4.99 at the thrift store. Second thing that I have to have is paint. So I will buy acrylic paint. And what I did is I bought these little tubs, these little acrylic tub things right here. This was a set that I found on the clearance aisle for $3. Okay. Um, you don't need a lot of paint actually to paint on a canvas. And this gives you a lot of little options of, of, of paint and you can mix easily mix it together. However, if you don't have one of those, you can also start with these five basic colors. You will need red, yellow, blue, white, and black. And from those five colors, you can mix almost any other color that you want. So um, you can get started very easily with just those five colors. So on this painting, I am only going to use these five colors and this little mixture right here that costs three dollars. Last, I want a little set of paint brushes. Now I get a little variety pack that has several different sizes of, of paint, but again I only bought this for like two dollars on the clearance sale rack as well. You don't need anything fancy, you don't need anything expensive. So I'm gonna, instead of opening this new setup, I'm just gonna use about four or five brushes that I already have of various sizes. Um, if you want, you could mix your paint on a palette. Um, I don't use a palette that often. I just kind of mix out of, mix on my paintbrush, but um, this you can do. This is a little plastic palette that I picked up for a dollar at the dollar store. Um, and that's something you can use easily. Also, you can use a paper plate. Or an old meat tray. Uh, you can reuse something that you bought, you know, food in. Um, it's real easy to just repurpose something to use as your palette. Um, you're also going to want to have water. Um, so I get a little cup here and I put water in the cup. That looks pretty gross right there. And then I also have a spray bottle. This is something, again, that I have repurposed. Took out what was in it because it's a nice little mister put plain regular water in it and you will see throughout the video that I, I missed my painting quite a lot when I'm painting. It helps mix the colors together. And last, a paper towel or a rag. The, again, something to wipe your paints on, something to clean up, messes with, whatever. So basically, that's all you need. And all the materials here were things that I've got around my house and I spent a total of $10. And again, the reason why you want to do this is the low risk factor. If I mess up, I, am not, I haven't lost anything at all. And I can get started now on my actual painting. So the idea here is that we just want to cover the canvas. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, and it doesn't matter what color you use. So here you can see I'm adding white and and I'm adding some black and I'm just letting it mix together. And I'm spraying a little bit of mist on our water in order to, um, you know, let it, let it blend. And so really all I'm doing here is covering the canvas. And I'm not really worrying about what it's gonna look like because I know that I'm going to cover it up. So then I've decided to just uh, add some color now so I'm going to add blue just a good covering of blue letting it mix together a little bit with the white in the in the gray in the background trying to get a little texture letting it blend let that dry for a little bit and then I start on a little bit of yellow and again I'm just covering covering and blending covering and blending not worried about the direction of my brush or or anything I am just covering and trying to cover the background up as good as I can as well as I can <laughs> Thank you. 
You'll notice that throughout this whole video series, I turn my canvas many times. It just It's just for ease of reach. That's, that's the only reason. So here I'm mixing some blue and some yellow together, as you can see, and that's making a, a pretty green. And this is actually my favorite color, green. And so I always feel like I have to have at least, at least a little bit of green on every painting. It just feels good to me. So here I'm just, again, I'm just covering up the canvas, letting the letting the colors blend. I'm also not cleaning my brush off in between changing colors. Sometimes I will uh, wipe the excess paint on the... I will sometimes put the excess paint um, on the paper underneath my canvas to get a little off. But usually I use a dirty brush technique, which means I just go from one color to the other because that eases the mixing of the colors together. And I like the effect that that creates. You can see you can still see a little bit of the stripes from the original painting but that's okay because I'm going to keep painting lay layers on here and it will uh, soon cover up okay so now we're ready for the next phase of our painting this phase is where we're going to write our intention for this painting and I always do it by thinking about the words, the intention words that I want to add to this painting. It's about, it's about the energy that I want in, this, in the final product of this painting. It's about the things that I want to infuse into the layers of this painting. And so, as you see, I'm deciding that on this painting I am going to infuse creativity and courage because sometimes it takes courage to try something new, like I'm doing here today. So I'm changing color up again, and I think, oh, what else do I wanna put into this painting? What else feels like it belongs here? So again, I'm gonna just add little resilience because I need to know how to bounce back from difficulty even when um, I'm trying something new and it's not working the way I would like and then I need to have some belief in myself belief in my ability to make it turn out the way I would like to so I'm going to infuse some belief into this painting. I want to believe in abundance. I want to believe that there is abundance and that I deserve abundance and that I can tap into that abundance at any time. Here I'm going to clear out a little bit of the paint on my brush. This is again in lieu of washing my brush out. I've thought of one more thing. I want to learn how to be a promise keeper, which means I want to learn how to keep promises that I make to myself. So I'm going to write that really, really big on my canvas right now. Just infuse that kind of energy of being a promise keeper. 
being able to trust and believe in myself and in my, in my own abilities. Okay, now I think that's good. I'm going to let that dry and that that is our last layer for this for this time. So join me for the next video where we will see how we can finish this painting. Okay, thanks, bye.